Pat Thomas is the costume designer for The Flight Attendant, and I'm Riley Chow. Now, I'm sorry, you have talked about this a lot, but I do have to ask, uh, what on earth Kaylee Cuoco is wearing in that funeral scene? Uh, <laughs> so I'll try to frame it a bit differently. Like, is this something that she already had in her closet, and for what reason, or did she go out and buy it for that scene? <laughs> um, are you talking specifically about the character or Kaylee herself? <laughs> <laughs> I guess more uh, the character cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that was a, um, it, it was actually in the scripts um, written by Steve Yockey. Um, and he had written it as um, that Cassie wears a, um, a hat and this sort of very sort of kind of over the top um, funeral outfit to this um, Westchester, you know, funeral. So, you know, when we were playing with it, like we, there's, there's always this push pull with Cassie and this sort of, you know, that she doesn't quite fit in, but that sort of works weirdly. So, um, you know, we played with the hat, obviously, and this sort of throwback kind of um, sort of feeling. Um, and also the dress, um, you know, she, it was like, obviously that she wasn't gonna be hidden in this, <laughs> in this, in her surroundings, you know, it's a beautiful dress, she looks amazing, but like her, ta her tattoo is showing, which was like, you know, a very like sort of fun moment to show that. Um, so yeah, it was not something, it, you know, I think we played with Cassie always sort of disguising herself, but not quite being able to accomplish it. Uh, I saw this ranking done by New York Magazine Vulture about like the 10 best coats that she has. Uh, how do you weigh like uh, getting characters to kind of wear the same clothes over and over again as people do in real life versus having them like have extravagant wardrobes since you are a TV show? Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, for me, I, I like when characters repeat things. Certainly, you know, there's shows where it, it, it is just an all out sort of fashion moment all the time. Um, but, you know, Cassie, I, I really like the fact that she felt like a grounded New York woman, someone that like people related to. And I think that's why people were so attracted to her fashion and to her clothing, because there was this this realness about her that you're like, oh my God, I wanna, like, first of all, I wanna be friends with her. Like, I wanna go out and have, you know, and party with her and I want her coat and I want her shoes. <laughs> so, you know, you have to sort of balance that, but at the same time, have it be, you know, something that people are like, oh my God, like, that's something that I wanna, I want, I want that, you know? Yeah, an area where you don't really have to stick to realism is in all those hallucination uh, sequences. So yeah. what were the rules there? Yeah, the mind, we called it the mind palace. So that was, you know, the, when we kept going back to that, to that place. I mean, there really weren't any rules. The rules were that we didn't want to, um, it wasn't that we didn't want things to stick out, but we wanted to, there did this sort of be this line between like, is this really happening? I mean, it, it's absurd. It couldn't possibly be happening. But then there's these moments where you're like, wait, is he lying dead in the bed? Or like, is she actually in that slip? Or like, did that actually happen? So, you know, the, 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 the only rules that we had were that it wasn't so, took you so far out of it that it that it just didn't work anymore. And it was a very sort of fine line in there. Hmm. Uh, did you have any rules about uh, certain colors? Like maybe, you know, since the flight attendants all wear blue, like nobody else in the show would be seen wearing that color? Yeah, we did. We, 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 we tried to limit the blue palette for that, for the moments that were on the plane so that that, so it felt, had this sort of very cohesive feeling and you know we also had other airlines as we traveled you know through Rome and through Bangkok and sort of all the other plays on um, on airline uh, uniforms so yeah I mean we did sort of limit that palette for for the um, for the airline for, mm -hmm. you know. and how do you describe the kind of the look the palette of the show overall yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of, um, it's sort of a cacophony, really. You know, it's a little bit like what goes on in her head. Um, you know, it's it, there's a lot of, I, I, I love, you know, mixing patterns and, and colors and textures. You know, you, you start with Cassie in this very like luxy sort of shiny, glittery rose gold dress that kind of has this sort of evokes Bangkok and the lights and this very romantic mood. And then, you know, you come back to New York to this kind of gray, you know, New York scape. So it was, you know, it was so much about also the locations that we were in because we were so fortunate to be able to shoot in these really in amazing places, um, you know, and it definitely affects the clothing. I mean, Rome is very romantic, um, you know, and it's, it was definitely that the colors of Rome, um, I think were definitely influenced what Cassie wore. Yeah, what's it like kind of not really having a solid base of New York since you are also in Bangkok and Rome? Like, are you bringing all the clothes over yeah. or are you? Yeah, we did. I mean, it was pretty, it's pretty, it was pretty challenging. Um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly for all of the, you know, the main 
characters. We everything was done beforehand. We had to, um, you know. And then we had I had such amazing crews in Bangkok and Rome. They were just um, uh, like so wonderful to work with, and you know we couldn't have done it without them because the time period was so short, you know. And it, and we we had to pack so much into every single day in all of those in all those cities because first of all it took so long to get anywhere. Uh, so yeah, we were definitely like vagabonds with suitcases of. of of costumes that we were nervous that we, you know, if we didn't hand carry them, they may not make it. So, yeah. Now, how do you characterize uh, those different looks, Bangkok and Rome? Yeah, I mean, Bangkok is, is, is our departure point, right, for the show. So it's this very hot kind of steamy, it's, you know, it's where Cassie sort of falls in love and with Alex and all, it all sort of starts to unravel there. And there's definitely that sort of mood. And then, you know, you come back to New York and things kind of like start imploding and it gets kind of colder and, you don't, you don't really know what's going to happen and, and things start falling Her world just start spinning out of control, you know, and then she goes to Rome and we always have these sort of connecting points. Right. And then Rome becomes the, this sort of um, where she kind of starts to figure things out. And um, there's also the her sort of the romance of it. And then she comes back to New York and it just, as we know, it kind of all goes to, goes to shit um, and then ends in Rome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the show actually is relocating from New York to Los Angeles for the second season. Uh, are you staying with it? I don't know. I mean, they're trying to work out. I think they're still figuring out dates, um, you know, and I think travel right now is is, income, is definitely complicated and it's part of the show. So I think they're trying to figure out, I think every, you know, as we know, every week in this world can be different. So um, fingers crossed, like everything works out and, you know, we get to, see some other amazing locations. Cause it definitely, I think is such a beautiful part of the show and it really affects it. Like, I think it's, I think you really, you would miss it if it wasn't there. If you do continue uh, for the second season, is there anything that you would kind of like to leave behind in the first season that you think maybe didn't work as well as you thought it would? Huh, it's, it's a good question. I don't, you know, because I don't know where the scripts are going. It's like, it was such a, it's such a luxury like first season that we had all of our scripts. So we knew like really, the trajectory of where it's going. Um, and, you know, I don't know if there's anything I would leave behind. I mean, I would hope that the, you know, you'd hope that the airline was still there because I think it's such a fun, it, it really, the, the banter and the sort of camaraderie and the joking with those guys is really, I would, I think you'd miss that. Um, and I don't know, it depends on what happens with Cassie. I mean, does she, is she going to be in the CIA? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what happens to her? She's going to, you know, fall off the wagon. I don't know. Uh, I want to ask you quickly about Dexter, which you said that uh, you're working on now, the new final season. So what can you tell us about that one? Yeah, I mean, um, Clyde Phillips, who was the original writer creator, um, came back uh, with Michael C. Hall and Scott Reynolds and Marcos Siegas directing it, who also directed some of the flight attendant. Um, and it's it's a great group. And I think they, um, you know, they they wrote a really amazing season, whether or not you want to call it a final, whatever you want to call it. It's a really great standalone 10 episodes that I think people are going to be pretty like wowed by. Um, it's going to be beautiful and interesting and really, it's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to be part of it. So you're a past uh, Emmy nominee for Great Gardens. Uh, you also won the Costume Designers Guild Award for that. Uh, for The Flight Attendant, you're just going to be submitting a single episode for Emmy consideration. Yeah. Uh, so what episode uh, are you submitting and why? Yeah, I, I, I submitted the first episode, the pilot episode, because I think it really is the, it sets up so well the story. Um, it, you know, it's so hard with episodic to pick one episode, but I think, I don't know how you couldn't just, how, how you couldn't pick that one, um, because I think it's just so, it's, it's what leaves you going like, oh, what, you, coming back, like, I want to come back for more and, you know, and, and see where this is going. Um, the, the last episode's great too, but I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't have that choice. Yeah, I don't know if you have any comments on this. Uh, I always find it curious how the costume design ballot is laid out uh, for the Emmys, where it's just, you know, the title of the episode, episode description, whereas you go over to like the makeup and hair ballot and you get actual descriptions of work that went into it. Yeah, it is really, it is kind of confusing. And it, it because it's, it doesn't really explain, you know, it, it's a little hard to, if, unless you've watched it or you've watched all of them to kind of know, I don't know. I find it very, it's such a different system um, than like the Guild Awards, you know, where it's based on the whole season. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's confusing to me too. 
Uh, Great Gardens was a change of pace for you in that it was a period piece and you tend to work with contemporary. Uh, so why do you uh, stick with contemporary most of the time? Yeah, I mean, it's not, I, I mean, I love doing all of them. I mean, I did another show called Public Morals with Ed Burns. Um, I, you know, I like doing period. I think it's a lot of fun. It's it's definitely um, its own its own universe. Um, I've just been lucky enough to sort of fall into a, um, a great group of people. I mean, I did um, four seasons of Mr. Robot, which was amazing, you know, and I love Sam Esmail and that's, you know, so you, you sort of, you find the people that you collaborate with well, and that's kind of what, you know, where, where you are, um, but, I'd be, I'd love to do another period piece. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last six years, you've really been working on series, whereas the you know, 20 years before that, it was all on movies mostly. Uh, so how did that change come about? Yeah, I mean, it really, I, I think that the whole business changed um, and the storytelling and the and the quality of, of the work in television is just so strong right now, you know? And, and when you get the opportunity, like I said, to work with a writer, creator, director that has, you know, that you have all of the scripts in in this in the same way that you do when you have a film script. Um, it's really tempting because you have this, you know, you you can tell a story over two or three seasons um, that you know a film is much more concise. Um, so you get, I don't know, it's it's a really it's it's a nice you really get to know the people that you're collaborating with. Um, and so each season there's sort of this growth, which I think is really, is a really interesting thing to, to explore. So, yeah. Are there any contemporary trends or fads that you just can't stand and we're never gonna see on one of your shows? <laughs> wow, um, I don't know. I would never say never. <laughs> I would never say never, I don't know. They, they all have their place and their moment. Maybe, maybe not for me, but you know, that's to each their own. Okay, uh, what kind of uh, sustainable practices uh, do you employ um, during costume work? Yeah, I mean, it's, there's, a lo there's a lot of waste in our business. Um, you know, it's really frustrating, that, especially with all the, you know, the protocols and the PPE right now. That's really like, it, there's a lot of, it, I'm not gonna say waste, but it is, there, there is a lot of waste. Um, hopefully, you know, as the world gets back to normal, that'll go away. But, you know, I've tried to, uh, what we, I really tried to, like when we shop, it's like, I'd like to use one bag instead of having like 65 shopping bags for like every little pair of socks and earrings. I mean, that makes me, in, makes me crazy. Um, you know, I think the shoppers may disagree with me sometimes, but uh, you know, there's, there's stuff like that. There's, you know, there's definitely the packaging of stuff is just out of control. So it's, it's really trying to rein some of that in. Um, you know, and reusing things. I think that's real too. You know, you can have a stock of clothes and not every single piece has to be new. Um, so, yeah. Going back to the beginning of the flight attendant, uh, how did you get this job? Um, and why did they think that you were right for this part? Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's, I, I met with um, Steve Yockey, obviously, and, um, and Kaylee. Um, and, you know, I, I, did a, I did the mood board and they were just, it just clicked. Like, you know, sometimes you just have the same sort of vision that they do. And it was kind of this instantaneous, like, you know, excitement sort of on all, all fronts. And Kaylee, you know, is obviously a, a new a producer, you know, to, it, the whole package. So, you know, she came off of doing sitcom and, you know, it was, you know, I said to her on the, on our call, I was like, listen, like, I, I will always be there for you. This is like, I am, I am there for you. Like this, I will be there for every costume change for every single, at all the creative process, you know? And she was like, really, you will? I mean, it was like, she was so like, I think taken aback because it's not, you know, you don't always get that relationship with the costume designer when you're doing sitcoms. So, um, so yeah, she, she was just so fun to work with. She made the whole process, like just truly like, so open to everything like texting you know any time of the day like hey what do you think about this and it was not like in an invasive way it was really just this very natural like yeah we just we just hit it off and i think it was it, it's I, you know the i think that the chemistry of the people that work together on that show really came through um and is what one of the reasons that makes it so special yeah and finally uh were there any characters that you found a bit more challenging that you couldn't really get a handle on um no, I wouldn't say that they were, that we couldn't get a handle on. I mean, we had, a, Miranda was, a, Miranda was an interesting one because, you know, you, you kind of, you, you had to figure out, like, you didn't want to give away too much, right, about her, at least for me, through the clothing. But at the same time, you know, she had this very powerful presence. Um, so she was kind of a fun one to play with. She was, it, I wouldn't say it was hard, but it was just, it, she was probably the more challenging one because she was very, ended up being very, sort of very pared back. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I worded that kind of harshly, but. <laughs> uh, uh, I know, not at all. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kat, well, thanks very much for chatting with Gold Derby today. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Riley.